Welcome back to America's Forum here on Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Right now we're going to take a look at an interesting Senate race. Staying with this issue in 2016-2014 midterm elections, we want to talk about Kentucky uh, right now. Also joining us here on set, J.D. Hayworth, former congressman, and, and David Patton as well. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here with us. And uh, we've been discussing Kentucky, but it's time to bring in a third, or actually a fourth voice on this, a gentleman who uh, cut his journalistic teeth at the Louisville Courier Journal, Howard Feynman, joins us via Skype. Howard, we appreciate you taking time out from your uh, your duties there with Huffington Post and MSNBC. Let's talk about what is happening as a Democratic candidate and Allison Lunder, uh, Lundergan Grimes in this early polling has an edge over Mitch McConnell, and of course, Mitch has that uh, that Tea Party challenge. What's your take on the upcoming Senate race in Kentucky? Well, uh, I think it's one of the more interesting ones uh, that they've had in Kentucky in a while, and and I think it could be I think it could be close. I would, uh, JD, I was down there last week in Louisville uh, when uh, Bill Clinton came into town to headline a fundraiser uh, for the Democrat Allison Grimes, and it was uh, overflow crowd, very pumped up. Uh, they claim to have raised six hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot of money by the Democrat standards in that state. The Democratic Party is very unified, and I think very excited about Allison Grimes, who's the Secretary of State. She's a attractive uh, young woman, a lawyer, smart, tough. Her father was the state Democratic Party chair and very close to Bill Clinton, so. She's kind of been reared in politics, and uh, she doesn't have that much of a track record for Mitch McConnell to shoot at, and she's less than half his age. Uh, Mitch is a five-termer, going for a sixth term. Uh, yes, he's got a Tea Party challenge on the right, and he's been, and he, Mitch, has been spending a lot of time trying to trample Matt Bevan, the Tea Party uh, candidate, into the dust. Mitch has enough money to do that and then run against Grimes. Now, I, I think... Uh, at, the, the, the primaries in May, I think everybody expects that, that Mitch McConnell will, will survive that uh, challenge from the Tea Party. And then his, his now good friend, Rand Paul, who wasn't always his friend, part of Rand Paul's job will be to try to soothe the Tea Party people and get them to turn out for Mitch McConnell. And that will be the deciding factor if those people come back to the party and go for Mitch. Well, Howard, you mentioned Rand Paul and the story the Washington Times broke this morning. From there in Frankfurt, the Kentucky Senate Republican leader proposing legislation that, for lack of a better term, we would call the LBJ turned Rand Paul law. In other <laughs> words, to make a change so that Rand Paul could appear on Kentucky's ballot in 2016, not only for the U.S. Senate, but also as a presidential candidate. Does that have a snowball's chance? Democrats still control the state house, do they not? Oh, yes, they do. And I, I went over to Frankfurt and I uh, talked to the Speaker of the House, who's a Democrat, when I, was, when I was in Kentucky last week. Uh, and that's Greg Stumbo, and I'm sure that he is uh, one of the tough old Democrats uh, still operating in Kentucky, would not let that uh, uh, get through the House of Representatives. However, the, the Democrats only have, a, uh, I think, a six or seven vote margin in the Kentucky House, which, by the way, is the only uh, state legislative body, I think, in the entire South, generously defined, that's still in Democratic hands. There's a chance, uh, you know, as Greg Stumbo says, there's nothing between me and Puerto Rico uh, <laughs> in terms of Democratic uh, state houses. So uh, if the Democrats were to lose the House in uh, this fall's elections, which is a possibility, and keep the Senate, which is likely, then I think the uh, Rand Paul slash LBJ rule might have, it, might have a shot. It, it does exist in other states and not just Texas. Um, I think, for example, in Wisconsin, um, uh, Paul Ryan was allowed to run both as vice president, excuse uh, both as vice president and and for Congress on the same ballot. There are a number of states who've adopted it. It's unlikely, but it just shows you uh, what's going on here, which is uh, I think fascinating, JD. Which is that the uh, the former enemies, uh, Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul, uh, have formed what could end up being quite a powerful alliance. I mean, what if what if the Republicans take the U.S. Senate back? What if they pass the LBJ rule? What if Rand Paul runs for president with Mitch trying to bring in the establishment and Rand going for the Tea Party? That's uh, 
Maybe I view everything through the eyes of Kentucky, but I find that pretty interesting. Well, Howard, this is John Bachman, and thanks for the, uh, the bless you, by the way. That was me sneezing. But you know, this also highlights... He, he's not allergic to you, Howard, we promise. He's just got a cold. But this also highlights the problem. I saw a profile on Allison Grimes uh, right after right. President Clinton's visit, and, and she was asked specifically if she would welcome President Obama to come down there to Kentucky to campaign alongside of her. And she was pretty clear that she doesn't want anything to do with the president. You know, his popularity ratings are an all-time low, certainly not welcome in a lot of these tight races. Uh, they right. could they could hinge, but you're you're talking about this the impact this could also have uh, on the how the the state race too, and could mm -hmm. also affect a, a changeover of, of power at the state house in Kentucky as well. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in that in that uh, that long and and quite joyous fundraiser at the Galt House in Louisville, uh, where Bill Clinton was the headliner, uh, Barack Obama's name was never mentioned, the president was never mentioned. The administration was never mentioned. And Bill Clinton, who was praising the Democratic governor, Steve Beshear, for the way he was handling and implementing uh, the Affordable Care Act, Bill Clinton, in his uh, inimitable style, said, I want to congratulate Steve Beshear for the job he's, he's doing on that health care thing. And <laughs> he, called it, he called it the health care thing. That, that so, health care thing. That health care thing. Oh, a carefully and, uh, chosen set of words there. So that sure. was as close as anybody got to mentioning President Obama. Now, that's that's Kentucky. Let's not overstate this. There, there are places where the president can still go and be helpful to Democrats, but not many of them, and certainly not in the south and border states, obviously. But also, I think, throughout a lot of the heartland. I mean, um, the president's ratings are, approval ratings are low. The Affordable Care Act is controversial, to say the least. Congress is, you know, nobody likes anybody coming out of Washington, for the most part, whether it's from the Congress or the White House. And the president's in the sixth year. Uh, so, yeah, he's not he's not popular. And certainly, certainly in a place like Kentucky, where he lost the presidential race twice by big margins. Howard, it's great to have you with us. We look forward to another chat. Okay, and let's all do it again, J.D. All those paid off. Great to have you along, pal. Thanks very much. From Harold Finneman here. In, uh, <laughs> Harold Finneman. Harold Finneman, a.k.a. Howard Feynman. Pal, we appreciate your time. Look forward to talking to you again. These races are so nuanced and so interesting. Can't wait to see how it all shakes out. And we'll be here with uh, everyone to bring them the updates, these little things that can kind of really have a big effect on these races. So, David, J.D., great conversation. Special thanks to us. Uh,